Hello there music lovers and welcome back to the woodshed. You want to be a better alternate picker? You want to improve your alternate picking in metal, rock, country, jazz, fusion, any genre? Fiddle tunes are your answer. Let's look at how my foundation of fiddle tunes helped me become the alternate picker that I am. And let's check out how it can improve your alternate picking. Roll it! <laughs> All right, let's dig in here and look at how these fiddle tunes can help you become a better alternate picker regardless of genre. This week I'm playing the Martin D45 that I gave my granddad when I won Guitar Center's Guitar Mageddon all those years ago. Uh, he always wanted one of these when we were kids and going around to the festivals. And uh, when I won the competition, I, they gave me a ton of prize money and I bought him this one. And so I figured it's appropriate to use for this week's episode. All right, let's dig into those fiddle tune licks. Okay, on the intro this week, I improvised some stuff across E minor. If you notice, I use B, D, C, uh, C sharp, and then A. A really nice kind of sound. Okay, now the pattern I was using, it was shifting back and forth through multiple patterns. Number one is when I cross pick, I'm not thinking about that as each individual pick stroke. That is internalized in my mind and my muscle memory as almost a banjo player would internalize a forward roll or a backwards roll in their finger picking style, right? So as I play maybe this, if I play that, I'm thinking a little bit more of each individual note. But if I play, say, this, I'm thinking of that as a roll, like one complete item as. So I'm not really thinking about the individual pick strokes. I think that's really important. Okay, one of the number one questions I get from students and uh, fans and friends and all this kind of stuff is, hey man, well how should I hold my pick in this way and that way and downward pick slanting and back and forth and this and do I hold it that way or like, Dude, if you look at Guthrie Govan, Tony Rice, Al DiMiola, uh, John Petrucci, Steve Morse, Jimmy Herring, like all of these guys have completely different right hand techniques. So the most important thing you need to look for in your playing is the one that feels the best. You cannot brute force your picking. And I would not look at something and be like, well, that guy's doing it this way, so that is how I have to hold my hand. That's only a very loose outline. That is not factual because, again, look at your favorite alternate pickers. They all have a different technique. All right, let's take a basic cross-picking pattern. Uh, let's take the one at the top of the intro. Now, I realize that I'm shifting the pattern a lot in the intro, so just bear with me. Slow it down. It's really hard for me to play these things slow again because they're internalized. I've practiced them at speed. Here's the deal. Basically, you've got three strings and you want to alternate pick across each one, one note per string. So what's going to happen is you're going to have down, up, down, and now you've got to jump over and get back to this lowest string and have up, down, up. Now you're going to be on the outside set, down, up, down. So if you look on the first pattern, it goes from down and then you have an inside set, up, down, and now you're gonna jump back to the inside, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, like that, right? And it's gonna keep inverting. Now to practice this, you can of course sit with a metronome and run it like you're running Hail Marys, and uh, I'm sure that may yield some results, in general, what I like to do is put on, uh, you know, maybe Tony Rice's Stony Point. That's one of the tunes I played in, in the intro. And uh, even though the song is predominantly got this melody that rolls around, you don't have to touch the melody. You can practice your alternate picking with that. Sorry, your cross picking. 
and you can play along with the record. I always played along with records. I didn't even own a metronome until I was 15 years old, 16 years old. Um, and that's not to say that metronomes are bad. They're great. But I was playing music with my granddad and my cousin. And when I wanted to learn something, I played along with a recording. And that's the number one thing that I can advise anyone. Of course, metronomes and drum loops and these things are great tools. But it's the most important thing you can do is play along with the recording. I know that two Bs and an E can get pretty monotonous. So as you are cross picking and working on your picking pattern, try moving up and down the string diatonically. All diatonically means is just within this, the, the key, within the scale key. So you can use the notes from G major. You can use E minor. Uh, let's do E harmonic minor. Natural seven. Right? And then we can use like the Tony Rice kind of sound. The most important thing is that you're visualizing the intervals and working on your picking all at the same time because your focus is to practice musicality. That's a big one. Practice musicality. Techniques are good, but they're just tools. You really, you're aiming yourself to be a creator, right? So you have to practice your creativity and your musicality. It's hard to practice anything else. Okay, the number one thing that I get um, is, Andy, I get that you learn on fiddle tunes. What are some great fiddle tunes that I can listen to? Well, I would say anything from the Kenny Baker, uh, Bobby Hicks era of Bill Monroe, right? So you're gonna get tunes like Jerusalem Ridge. <laughs> Right? I would say some Doc Watson type stuff. Um, you're going to get things like Billy in the Low Ground. All right, and then of course you have things from Tony Rice. Manzanita is not really a fiddle tune, but there are some tunes on that album. Uh, Blackberry Blossom, uh, I played Stony Point, and that's got a great melody. I wanna show you one lick from Stony Point that's a real tricky lick. It's at the end of the first E minor section. <laughs> That right there is something that I've developed just to kind of let every string ring out and it's a really cool sound, but it's very difficult in the right hand. So let's go over it together. G, E, G, B, E. Look at the right hand. Now this right here is very similar to some of the Steve Morse patterns that you'll hear in like too many notes and things like that. So you got four strings, one note per string. And you're trying to keep it as even and musical as possible going into the eighth notes that make up the, uh, the, the head of the tune, right? Right? One last thing about alternate picking and fiddle tunes is you're going to have to get creative because the fiddle and the mandolin are tuned in fifths, so the fingerings that may lay out super easy on mandolin fiddle lay out terrible on guitar. Um, one of which, if you saw my Instagram this week, I played a little bit of the Will Hoss from Bill Monroe, and that's one that goes like this. <laughs> So that G to F section is really, really tricky. Banjo players sometimes may not even acknowledge the uh, the full melody. They may end up doing something like... Right? For me, when I was working on it, here the main melody that a fiddle player might play would be... Like that. So I'm, as you can see, I'm playing the G on, on the D string. But it sounds kind of flat and square. Like the tone's not really great. So 
Again, you're making the difficulty go up when you put the G in the right hand, but it sounds better. For instance... <laughs> Now that's a variation on the back of it. When I said get creative, that's a prime example. So instead of playing this twice, I played up the first time and then I went down the second time. Let's take a look at that. And then you can do a tag of your choice. All of those kind of standard bluegrass tags fit in, drop in perfectly. So when you're learning fiddle tunes on the guitar, uh, whiskey before breakfast, you're going to have to get creative with fingerings. Now, there's plenty of videos of plenty of bluegrass monsters out there playing these songs. May I advise checking out Trey Hensley. You may know him from being a guest on The Woodshed, uh, Jake Workman. Brian Sutton, Billy Strings, obviously anything from Tony Rice and Doc Watson, that goes without saying, okay? Plenty of great pickers out there that you can kind of get inspiration from on their fingerings, and that's just as simple as looking at if they're playing a song in D, are they playing it in open D, or are they using a capo and playing it out of a C position? Those are really important details when learning your fiddle tunes. All right, here's a little add-on freebie. Fiddle players like to use a, t a, a technique called the double shuffle. Now, I use a lot of that in my picking where I will take two notes that are on adjacent strings and use a double shuffle inspired, there's my quotes, there's my quotes right there, double shuffle inspired picking pattern, right? So let's take two notes, let's take uh, G and D since we're playing in that area. <laughs> You might have heard me play something like that where it's like uh, kind of using it as a pedal tone and I'm moving the top note around. So what I'm doing is this right here, zone in. And you can change again, change the top note. You can move it around, maybe play it in a minor key. And it's very reminiscent of the fiddle player double shuffle kind of thing. Another great exercise, technique, trick, I hate the term exercise, technique trick that you can practice when you're practicing musicality, right? Okay, so let's review here. When you're working on your cross picking or your alternate picking or any of this stuff, you don't obsess over what it looks like. You're worrying about what it feels like. You want to feel natural. Okay, the other thing we talked about was changing multiple strings and the pick direction that happened in, in that. Like when you have one note per string and you've got to change the pick direction. Making that roll feel like one complete cycle is like one pick stroke, okay? Talked about the fingerings of the fiddle tunes and how you're going to have to get creative and add little things uh, to the fiddle tune melody to make it work out really well on guitar. You also want to have, if you're playing acoustic, you want to have a lot of strings open, uh, ringing out. They want to be open, right? And then lastly, we hit on that little double shuffle thing. So what I want you to do is uh, check out some, some of these fiddle tunes, uh, spend a little time with them, and you'll be surprised the next time you go to play some Kill Switch or some Dream Theater or some Eric Johnson, some of those rock licks and those metal licks are going to come out a lot easier because now you're used to switching strings, right? That's the main thing with learning fiddle tunes is getting comfortable with switching strings and having odd note groupings and an even note grouping on different string sets. You could have a grouping of three and then a one and then three. Right? That's very common in fiddle tunes and that kind of music. So dig in, check it out, and I hope to see you next week in the woodshed. For tons of more exclusive content, go to patreon.com slash andywoodmusic. You're going to get access to a weekly Zoom call if you're in a combo amp or higher tier. You're going to get uh, over 200 videos. You're going to get uh, tones from an Axe Effects, backing tracks, all that good stuff. Now, if you're interested in courses from True Fire or Jam Track Central or Jam Play, go to andywoodmusic.com. Also over there, you can get all my albums and videos and things like that. Cheers.